Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Today, my mighty math whiz, we're going to help our friends with their day-to-day -day tasks. And believe it or not, we're going to need all the math tricks and strategies we've learned about division problems with fractions. We can use an array diagram or a number line to help us visualize division. And we can even use the keep, change, flip method. All right, there's no time to spare. Let's get to work. Ooh, Eric's making lemonade. Eric used one-eighth of a cup of sugar to make a pitcher of lemonade. If he were to pour the lemonade into three smaller cups for his friends, how much sugar would be in each cup? All right, so the total amount of sugar, one-eighth of a cup, is being equally divided into three cups. Let's start by writing down our expression of one-eighth divided by three. Uh-huh. What time is it? Keep, change, flip time. All right, we're going to keep the one-eighth. Next, we're going to change the division to multiplication. And the last step is to flip the three to create its multiplicative inverse, one-third. And don't forget the number three is the same as three over one. So when we flip it, we get 1 over 3, or 1 third. 1 times 1, 1. 8 multiplied by 3 is 24. So each small cup will have 1 24th of a cup of sugar in it. Sweet. Oh, and who have we got here? It's Will and Sue. And they're working on writing an adventure story for their writing class. Let's see if we can help them out. Will is writing a book. If a small book took one-sixth of a ream of paper to make, how many books could Will make with two whole reams of paper? Well, two reams of paper are our total that's going to be divided into groups of one-sixth. And this gives us the expression two divided by one-sixth. Now, for this problem, let's use a visual model. All right, this rectangle here will represent one whole ream, and this rectangle, another whole ream. That is the total amount of paper we need to split to find out how many books Will can make. Now we need to make groups of one-sixth for each book. So the first ream we can partition in six groups of one-sixth, and we can do the same for the other ream. And so, in total, we can make 12 groups of 1 sixth. And this means that 2 divided by 1 sixth equals 12. So Will can make 12 books using the two reams of paper. Neat. I'm excited to read all those books. Ooh, and next up is Sue. She has to write 8 pages for a book report. O-M-G. How many minutes will it take Sue to finish the book report if she writes one-seventh of a page every minute. Well, that sure is a super practical problem, isn't it? It could even help you manage your own time when it's your turn to write a book report. All right, so the total is eight pages for the book report, and it's being divided into groups of one-seventh, because she writes one-seventh of a page every minute. We can create an expression of 8 divided by 1 seventh. And again, it's time to keep, change, and flip. We're going to keep the 8 and change the division into multiplication. And next, we can flip the 1 seventh into 7. And now we have 8 multiplied by 7, and that is 56. Oh, cool. So it'll take Sue 56 minutes to write that 8-page book report. That is some excellent and speedy writing. Well, what if Sue had plans with her friends and wanted to finish her book report even quicker? How much of a page would she have to write every minute to get it done in 24 minutes? Well, let's look at the expression we just solved. So the total number of pages is not changing. We still need 8. But instead of 56 minutes, we now want 24 minutes. So what can we multiply 8 by to get 24? 3. Now, to undo the keep change flip, 8 divided by 1 third is equal to 24. So Sue would need to write 1 third of a page per minute in order to finish the book report in 24 minutes. 
That's a lot of writing in a little bit of time. Sue, get to it. We're moving on. Mmm, what's that smell? <gasps> oh, yes! Mia made an apple pie to share with her friends for all the good work they did today. But all that writing made Will and Sue really pretty hungry, and so they already ate some of the pie, leaving two-fourths to their other friends. Mia, Eric, and Jenny have to share two-fourths of the apple pie. Which of the following expressions represents this situation? And what fraction of the apple pie will each person get? Well, first, let's find the correct expression so we can solve it. We can begin by finding the total in this situation. The amount of pie that needs to be partitioned is the total, and that is two-fourths. Now we want to see what operation we're going to use. Well, the total amount of pie left is going to be equally shared by Mia, Eric, and Jenny. And this tells us to divide. Now, how many people is it going to be divided between? Three. So we need to find the expression two-fourths divided by three. And there it is. Let's circle it. Now we have the expression that represents the situation. We can solve it to find how much of the pie each person gets. Let's visualize it. So, we have a circle to represent the whole pie. And then we need to divide the whole into four equal pieces to get two-fourths of the apple pie that we need to share between the three friends. Oh, but hang on. Two-fourths? Well, that's actually one-half. If this whole is cut into three equal pieces, well, you can see that there are six parts that make up the whole apple pie. And this means that one part represents the fraction of one-sixth. Awesome! So one-half divided by three equals one-sixth. And now we know that Mia, Eric, and Jenny will get one-sixth of the apple pie each. Great work today! We helped our friends solve division problems that included fractions. Time to take a break and enjoy some of Eric's lemonade. See you next time.